In this video, I'm going to go through um, some tricks for helping you to memorize your inverse trig derivatives. There are only six of them that you have to memorize, and um, as opposed to maybe a specific chart or something that you've got to memorize, I would probably memorize how I could quickly write them down on a test and then use it to refer back to on a test. That would probably be about the best way to do this. Okay. Now, there are six total that you have to memorize. However, technically you only have to memorize three because I'm going to show you a nice little pattern. If you write them in a certain order, then that's why you only have to memorize three. All right, so when I would go to jot these down and try to do it very quickly, I would do down my left-hand column, I would do sine, tangent, and secant. All right, so STS, nice little pattern there. Okay, so I would do inverse of sine U, and then I would do inverse tangent U, and then I would do inverse secant U. All right, now for the video, I am going to go ahead and put the ddx in front of each one of these to show that we are taking the derivative. Probably on a test, if you were trying to jot this down really, really fast, you would not take the time to write that because you'd want to just memorize the formulas rather quickly here. Okay, so that's the first thing. I would write these three in this order, sine, tangent, secant, all right, STS, nice little pattern there. All right, now, um, all of the inverse trig derivatives are quotients, all right, so I would go ahead and put a quotient in for each one of them because I know that that's going to be needed. All right, all the numerators are the same, so that's easy to memorize. U prime, U prime, and U prime. All right, I probably do need to make note here, this U is um, a function in terms of X. Okay, so then we're definitely going to have that chain rule in there, so there's where the U prime's coming from. Okay, now, at this point, what I would do is I would start using the mnemonics to help doing the memorizing here. Okay, for your sine and your secant. All right, they both start with an S. Okay, they both start with an S. All right, so for me, the S is going to remind me that I need subtraction. Okay, so that means this one's going to have subtraction, and this one's going to have subtraction. So I would probably put those in because they correspond to my S's. All right, now the next thing I would do, that S, all right, to me, I can see a square root sign kind of being an elongated S. Okay, so this one's got to have a square root. And see in there, if you kind of visualize, there's a little S, curvy S shape with that S just being elongated right there. All right, so that means both of these have a square root because of the S. Okay, a little visualizing the S. So two things to help you remember for the S right there. All right, now the next thing I would go to memorizing is the T and the tangent. All right, the T and the tangent forms a cross. All right, so that means I'm going to need addition. All right, in the denominator there. Okay, now from this point, you just kind of have to memorize what goes in these spots, but you only have two choices. You have a 1 and you have a u squared. The first two are identically the same, so you've got a 1 in the first spot and then a u squared. All right, and then same thing for this. They are in the exact same spot, so a 1 and then a u squared. All right, and then for this last one, this guy, you just are going to have to remember the secant guy is the oddball, so then it is switched. So u squared here and one here and this is an oddball really is an oddball so then you've got to remember to do the absolute value of u there out in front okay just him being the oddball right there okay now there's your tricks and your mnemonics for how you're going to get all your little symbols and your square roots in what you need there okay now that's all you need to memorize, all right, besides the fact that you've got three more to write over here, but there's no memorizing. These three over here are going to be identical to these, all except for a negative sign, okay? Now, how do you know which ones go in which order here? Okay, to me, again, this seems kind of obvious. For me, a sine and cosine goes together really, really nicely. All right, this is tangent, so cotangent goes with that one, and secant cosecant go with that. So all of your C functions are over here. All right, so inverse of cosine U, inverse of cotangent U, and inverse of cosecant U. And again, if I was writing this out on a test, I probably would not take the time to do the DDX. All right, you're going to know that you, you, these are the derivatives. Okay, but for the video here, we'll go ahead and put that DDX in front of each one of them. 
all right, and then equals, 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 all right. Now, as long as you make sure you've got these in the right order and they correspond logically, it makes sense, then all you have to do is copy these down exactly as you would see it, all right. So you prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared, u prime over 1 plus u squared, and u prime all over absolute value of u, square root of u squared minus 1. All right, now I'm going to put in a different color. The only thing you've got to remember to add is a negative, a negative, and a negative because each one of the codes there are a negative. All right, so uh, just some little mnemonics and tricks to help you remember your inverse trig derivatives. If you like it, the video, be sure and give me a thumbs up and definitely share with your friends. Thanks for watching.